Sudanese. My name is Peter Man Mekundit. I am a signatory of the South Sudan Peace Process and a former Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster. I am a leader of the People's Liberal Party and I am also the leader of the coalition of the other political parties who are part of the agreement. I am also the chairperson of the coalition of the 10 political parties in South Sudan that is known as the umbrella of political parties. I am a politician by profession in South Sudan and today I want to share with you a very important message. It is important because it is connected to the peace process and the implementation of the peace agreements and also to the coalition that I lead. I am a signatory of the South Sudan peace process and I am going to share with you very few statements in regards to the implementation of the South Sudan peace process. One, there has been there a continued violation to the peace agreement by one party, that is the IG. And as a result of these continued violations, it may make it impossible that I may not continue to be a party to this agreement. The violations had to continue and it has continued in a very numerous way. It is not only a violation against one party, but it has been a violation against several parties, including the SPLI, so on, and the OPP and FDs as well. In positions that there is a possibility if the violations are not addressed, and if political dialogue is not initiated, and if there will be no intervention from IGAD, head of the state and government, the IGAD council of ministers, the argument to address the continued violations in regard to the current peace agreement. Yes, we will not continue to exist in a peace process that will not meet the inspiration and desire of our people. We is to work peace, prosperity, and development. In this junction, I would like to highlight a very key issues. But before I come to that, I want you to know that the current government, which is known as the article now, it is a government of the parties. It is not an elected among the five parties, I am one of its signatory. We are bounded by the agreement. We, we should implement it in letter and spirit. Failure to implementation of this agreement by letter and spirit and the continuation violation towards this peace process, it may call for my withdrawal from the peace process and also from the right now. And it is very unfortunate that the terms of the government will be formed as a result of the agreement that the signing at its terms to end on February. And even though we have signed the roadmap and I'm signatory to the roadmap, it is going to be very difficult to continue with the roadmap as I continue to see and experience the continuation of the violations to this agreement. Perhaps many citizens and the world may ask what are the violations. I may not be able to list them all, but I would be able to mention some few key aspects towards the violation that had occurred. Let me just mention in very few articles. In Article 1, we is basically talking about governance. The Article 1 actually talked about the divisions of power, the power of the president, the power of vice president, electoral system, and also the local government. 
including many others in terms of governance. But what we have seen, we have seen that the agreements clearly tells that or it tells that the Pope President is only appointing authority. He has no right to nominate, he has no right to choose, he has no right to reject a nominee of another party. But what we have experienced throughout the implementation, we have experienced a situation whereby your nominee is rejected, your appointed nominee is removed without your knowledge. We have seen inadequate divisions of power. We have seen an interference of other party, which is missed basically the IG has interfered in all parties' affairs. And they have marginalized the other parties. So the principles which we sign in chapter one, whereby decisions are made in inclusion and a collective and consultative manner, it has failed, which is a serious violation. In issues related to the presidency, there are decisions that should have been made in consultation with the other vice presidents. In issues related to parties, there are decisions that should be made in relation to the leaders of those parties. Sometimes we are surprised to hear degrees where the leaders of the parties have not been consulted, as if it's a government of one party. This is not an elected government. This is a government of parties that had agreed to bring peace to South Sudan and hand over the power as the end of the transition to the people of South Sudan to be able to determine and elect their own leaders. We're only one month away to the ends of the transition. In chapter 2, a new body was created, headed by the presidential advisor. A body that is outside the agreement that had made it very difficult to implement the security arrangements. The assembly of forces, the training, and even though some few have been graduated, it is still very difficult to redeploy them because you have brought in a body that does not exist in the agreement that had marginalized the means of defense, the means of interior, the means of national security, and all other security operators to be able to function and perform their national duty. So we must address the root causes that has let the RT gonna fail to implement the transition. We have failed even to establish the special construction fund frequent removal of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and other ministers without consultations from the parties and including the presidents as well. It has been a stumbling block to implement the 17 SDD goals in the country. Today, I'm here to delight the public that if these grievances are not quickly addressed as soon as possible, the possibility of I, as the leader of the parties, the leaders of pollution, signature to the agreement, withdrawing from the government is going to be very much possible. Because we came from a background of an opposition political party and we are people centered party. Even though we are 
let our people down. I apologize. But now time has come immediately for Fed. As the transition comes to an end, I may not be part and partial of unproductive government if the agreement is not implemented in the direct spirit. I call on IGAD. I call on IGAD head of states and government, on IGAD council ministers. I call on the office of the special general, the RGM, to quickly intervene to save South Sudan peace process. Not just by helping the IG, the SPLM IG, to cease hostility against the other parties, but also to clearly address the root causes that has led the Archigona to fail to implement the transition. I also call on the people of the Republic of South Sudan from their various tribes, from wherever they are, that the clock is kicking for you people to take charge of the affairs. As soon as the current government legitimacy comes to an end, it is time now to sit down, to rethink, to re-strategize, and looking at the various possibilities, including but not limiting to the fact that you can have technical government that will prepare the politicians for elections and I hope you will elect the politicians that will be able to deliver that particular future to you. As for now, we welcome His Holiness the Pope and all the visitors Truth must be said, South Sudan peace is at risk. The future of South Sudan is at risk. It can only be said by the people of South Sudan themselves, as the people of Sudan did so, and other nations did so.